Hi everyone. Today I wanted to do a dedicated video to my uh, right-click context menu creator. Um, I previously touched upon it when I did my command line switch uh, video, but um, you know I always emphasize how it's used in Access, and today I wanted to broaden the subject a little bit because this tool goes far beyond Access. And if we just take a glance here at Microsoft's command line switch page, we're actually able to use the same tool to implement right-click context menus for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook. And this is what I wanted to briefly cover, just to show you how not only can it help you in access development, but it can also help you beyond access. Um, so let's look at what is my right-click context menu creator. Um, what it is, is it's going to add a menu when you're in Windows Explorer. Why? Well, right now, if we want to implement any of these commands, we have to go through the command prompt. We have to start up the command prompt. We got to type in the file path between quotes. We have to add the proper command line switch and whatever else it requires. And this is just tedious. And I thought to myself many years ago, there had to be a better way, and there is. And this is where this tool came from. Um, if we look at the existing situation of things, if you right click on any Office document, you always basically get the same menu, right? When you, when you right click here, if you open up an exploring window and you right click on any of the files, you always get the same menu. There's nothing specific about access. If you right click on Excel, there's nothing specific about Excel. And the same is true of Word. There's nothing, no special commands to execute the command line options, all those special commands for them. And this is what this tool does, is when you right click, now you're going to have an extra menu that's going to pop up that gives you those commands. So you no longer have to go in, let's say if we're talking about access for open exclusive, you don't have to go in and open up the database uh, and then go in and select file, open, go find your file, then go change the option from open to open exclusive. It's just a waste of time. And this is the type of thing that, you know, personally, I would have liked to have seen baked right into Office, but at least now we have an option and we can make it a reality. And it all starts by simply scrolling down to the bottom and downloading the, the, the download. It's a free download. And what you're going to get in this case is it's actually an access database. I'm using access to implement it. But in reality, the code could be uh, implemented into Excel or Word, wherever you want to use it. But right now, I'm using a form through access to do the work. And you're going to get, at the end of the day, this tool here. So let's open it up and just see what it is exactly. So it starts off with a simple disclaimer. You know, we're working with the registry. Uh, you're using a download off the internet. It's used at your own risk. I offer no warranties whatsoever, but I've also been using this now for six years and never experienced any issues. So take it as a grain of salt. You are still responsible for your choices and actions. You choose to run it. It's at your own risk. Um, but that being said, if you see what happens, you get a form, and the form is divided into two sections. So you have the left-hand side, which is a list of the extensions that you can choose from to apply this menu. So this menu does not apply to all files. It will only apply to the extensions, not only that are listed here, but in reality, only the ones you select. So even though I can have eight extensions here, if I only select one, it will only apply this menu against that single extension. So you have total control what it gets applied against. Secondly, on the right-hand side, we have a list of the commands. So these commands, if we see here, compact, decompile, open, exclusive, that's what we are going to get in our menu. Compact, decompile, open, exclusive. Okay? So the two control the menu. And once, uh, again, just like the extensions, just because they're listed here, it doesn't mean they get applied. So you have to choose which ones will get applied. And this is where the whole power comes in. You can customize the menu in any which way you want. As you can see currently, I have four commands set up. 
But if we come back to the command line options, there are more than four that are available to us. So perhaps you want to add more. It's up to you. You have the control. I put the four that I personally think are the most useful. But if there's something else you want to add, you can add it. Um, and the same is true of the extensions. You always have the edit list buttons here on both of them. You simply go into them and say, I want to add a new one. I want to add the MDT extension, let's say. There you go. You've added it. Now it's possible. You can select it if you so choose. And the same is true. You can also remove anything you don't want. I don't want that. It's gone. Okay. So you can adjust the extensions. You can adjust the commands 100%. And that is why I say it goes beyond access, because as we're going to do in two seconds, we can put the extensions and the commands for Word or the extensions and the commands for Excel or Outlook. So let's continue along the frame of access. And we're just going to make it simple. I'm going to select all the extensions. I'm going to select all the commands. And then all you have to do is press Create Menu. And there you have it. Operation completed. It is done. So it has created the, the necessary registry entries because this is all done through the registry. That now if I right click on any database that has the extensions that we specified, when I right click, I now have a new menu and I have those options. And then you just press on the one you want. And there you go. My database was compacted. And, and similarly, if we were to come here and select the runtime, there you go, it opens in runtime. And yes, this is normal. This database doesn't have a ribbon, so I have no ribbon. I don't have a default form to open at the opening of the database. And the nav pane gets hidden in runtime, so effectively this database wouldn't work for a runtime user. And that's what the simulate runtime is so good for, is it allows me as a developer to see that and now make the necessary corrections to my database. Okay, how does it work? Let's look at the details. So we need to go into the registry. And quite simply, this isn't rocket science, it's very simple. For every extension that we specified, right, so for each one of these extensions here, it will make a registry entry up here in the current users, software classes, and then the, the class that we've specified. So it's going to do one for the ACCDA, the ACCDE, ACDR, DT, and then the standard MDB, MDE. And what it does is it comes in, it creates a shell entry with the name of the submenu, and then it creates a submenu for each command. And that's literally all it is. And if you look at the details of the command, let's say for compact, as you saw here, MS access EXE, the percent one slash compact. Well, if you come here, you look at the command for compact, that's exactly what the command is that we're telling it to add. So it really is very straightforward. It's simply taking what we've selected here, the commands that we've written, and it's pushing it out into the registry for us one, one menu item at a time. So that sums up the complexity of this. It really isn't very complex. You just need to understand. And I created a tool through Access to make these entries. You could make these entries manually. It's tedious, especially when you start thinking, you know, I'm doing 10, 10 extensions, you know, create, create, D word, create, D word. It gets to be lengthy. I just created a simple tool, wrapped it in access to do so. Um, so that, that's the heart of the matter. So let's turn our attention to Word, for instance. If we look on the command line switch page from Microsoft, we have a multitude of commands available to us. So let's implement two or three just to demonstrate how it works for Word as well. And then if you need other ones, you can do, just follow the same principle because it's always the same idea. So let's start off with the easy one, the slash Q, which is open without a splash screen. So we open up our tool. And we are going to enter in extensions for Word. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm only going to put in two. Will you put in all the extensions that you commonly work with? Okay. And when you're done, you just exit out. You're okay. And now we have to enter the commands. So no splash screen. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm naming my command. You can name it however you'd like. And then here we have to put the command that we want to execute. 
Well, for Word, to start Word, it's not word.exe, it's actually winword.exe. That's the command that's being run. And then we have to put the file name, and that's what the percentage one in quotes represents. That actually represents the file name that you're right-clicking on, so the item you're right-clicking on. And then we have to add in our command line switch, the slash Q. Okay, we're here. Let's try adding a second one, a more complex one. This one here, start Word with a new document based on a template other than the normal template. So what we're telling it is we're going to right click on a document and use that as a template for creating a new document. So we're not editing the file we click on, but we're using it as a, an initial basis for creating a new document. And look at the difference here, however. They're telling us the command line switch is a slash T followed by the template name, the file. So the file doesn't go before the command line. It has to go after. And also notice here, there's no space. Unlike the very next one, which is also slash T. Uh, add a little confusion there, Microsoft. Thank you very much. <laughs> but if you include a space, then you're telling it, well, just open it. So be careful here when you do the second one, the template one, there is no space or else it just opens the file. So let's see how we implement that. It's very simple. You just have to pay attention. The file goes after. So let's go here. Uh, we're going to say open as template, let's say file. And then we come here, we do the winword.exe. And here we put the slash T followed by the percentage one, the file that we're on. And then we exit. And you keep doing that for as many of the command line switches that you want to implement. Okay, I'm going to do two quick ones that il illustrate the principle, but it's always the same thing. So just remember that percentage one here in between quotes is the file. So based on what the web page from Microsoft tells you, you may have to move it to the left or the right of the command line switch. That's all. And also pay attention, as I demonstrated here for this one, the spacing is critical. If there's no space, don't put it in your command or you'll get the, a different behavior you're not expecting. Then, per usual, we just select which extensions we want, which commands we want, and then we just simply run it. It'll finish up, and now we can test them out. So let's pretend for a second that we're on Windows Explorer. We've got our file here. Now let's open it, first of all, normally. So if we just double click, we get the splash screen, that blue splash screen, and we're in our document. Perfect. So let's exit out of it. Now let's try our right click command. So the first one, we just come up, no splash screen. So we'll click on it. And you'll see you don't get that window splash screen. You go straight into the document. Similarly, if we right click on it, we come here, database tools and open as template file. You see, we're not editing new Microsoft Word document. We're editing document one, a new document, but it took the content from this one and automatically put it here. And it gives us a starting point for creating new documents. So basically you can turn any existing document into a template for creating new documents and just by right clicking now. And if, now if you go save, it's going to ask you for a name and a location because you're not editing the original file. So now let's turn our attention to Excel. Well, if we come back to the command line page for Microsoft, you'll see that Excel offers us a whole slew of available command line switches. And we can just pick any of them we want. Let's say the read only. And once again, like Word, pay attention. The command line switch is before the file name. So that's the only thing we have to be paying attention to. And you'll also notice in this case, there's a space. So let's go back into our tool. First things first, we have to specify extension. So we could just do XLSX and uh, XLS. You add as many more as you want, XLSM, you know, you know all, all of the uh, standard extensions. So the next thing we have to do is add the command to the database. So read only, and the command for Excel is excel.exe. 
Then we have to do the slash r and then the file, followed by the file. Remember, the percentage one in quotes is the file. So now, well, let's do another one. The slash t, sure, which is start Excel as a template. Okay. So we come here, start as template file, file, and you do the Excel, dot exe, you do the slash t, you do the quotes percentage one, and that would be it. So then we come and we select which extensions we want to apply and which uh, commands we want to apply. We press the button, they get created. Let's see what we've achieved. Well, if we open an Excel file normally, right? We just open it. You had a splash screen. You see here we're editing the new Microsoft Excel worksheet.xlsx. And we can edit whatever we want and we can save whatever we want. Everything works perfectly. Now let's see our tool. We right click and let's try read only. And as you can see up here in the bar, the it tells you you're in the, the same document, but it's read only. And if I come, I can make changes. That's not a problem. But when I go to save it, I'm going to get an error message. No, you can't because we're in read only. That's what we selected. Okay. Similarly, if we right click on it and we choose start as a template file, it's using that document to start a new one, but we're not in that one. We're in a, a one. So we're in a new document, and I can, when I press save, it's not going to overwrite my old document. Look, we'll change the value here. We'll save it. It's going to ask me where to save it because it's not overwriting. We haven't defined this document's name and location yet. So that's what that template option is for. It's the same as in Word. It allows you to base a new, in this case, Excel workbook on an existing one as a starting point. And like I said, you can implement any of the other ones you want. And you can implement them similarly for PowerPoint and Outlook. Outlook can be useful, as you can see, for cleaning out things, for opening in safe mode. All these different things can be very useful in reality. I hope this was a little bit more of a detailed overview of the tool. And I hope it really does illustrate how this tool Yes, although it was designed originally with Access in mind, uh, can work for basically any of the Office applications and can simplify people that work with Word, people that work with Excel, Outlook, um, how it can simplify your life and save you having to work in the old DOS command prompt and look up command line switches and know when to put quotes and all these other things. Now you're able to integrate a tool that works, as you can see on the desktop, uh, it works in the Windows Explorer environment, and then you end up just with a simple right click and select the command you want to run. Um, so I'd like to, for the usual, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching my video. If you don't mind, give me a like, a thumbs up, subscribe. Um, and if you have the capacity to share in online communities and help me promote the videos, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, the more you guys support these videos, the more I'm able to make them. Um, have a great day, guys, and thank you once again. Take care.